Hey guys, okay, for gold in the introduction. Hi, I'm Frankie V, etc. etc. Uh, let's jump right into our project uh, straight away. And uh, uh, where we left off was uh, we did the collision, the exterior collision to, that's necessary to keep the player on the outside. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, we're going to start working on doing what is necessary to t tub in the inside as well as, um, you know, discuss. Uh, uh, a construction theory as to uh, you know making sure that uh, our results once we pull them into Unreal 4 is going to be rather predictable so if we look at this area in here out out here we're using a basic lighting we haven't done anything as far as lighting goes so that's uh, that is a process that I leave for finalization because as we move along we're going to be changing a lot of the uh, materials and what have you and we've got a lot of balance on the end and uh, and uh, hmm, you know that's uh, lighting is a um, a craft, a talent, a skill on its own, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's not really my forte, so to speak. I can make this look nice. What I'm looking for is, uh, of course, is uh, getting rid of this kind of junk. Um, uh, so uh, that's why we want to build clean. Uh, using a facade now the purpose of the facade is a to keep the outside light outside and the inside light inside so that it reacts in a predictable manner and then we can adjust any kind of lighting levels to uh, sort of balance things out as we need now of course this looks a little bit this type of this type of lighting uh, solution um, is almost identical to what it is in it tech 3 but uh, not too not too pleasant but anyways, let's uh, get on with the show. Uh, first of all, let's clear out some stuff in here that we don't really need. And why we uh, divided things into sections over here as far as level streaming is, is this is um, a kind of a kind of like working with layers, but uh, we can actually uh, uh, we can actually replace these files as we improve. So if I don't like this master lighting, I could drop in another one and another one and another one and replace these and but still keep them on hand. So if I want to go back, I can always go back uh, where you can't really do that when using layering because it's active as part of the uh, as part of the scene. So uh, but we want the ability to do something that uh, we want to get the, the stuff that we're not going to be working on out of the way. So we're not going to be working on doors. We're not going to be working on signs like we got these this here is part of the sign layer so we'll get rid of that oh we still have uh, some object there which is probably dropped into map objects yep there it goes and everything that uh, as the part of a different uh, layer is out of the way so we can actually see how our uh, our facade work is going to snap right into this area now we got some construction elements in here that should be um, I should fork off to a different file. I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that later. Um, once I bring in these items as as map objects, so I can duplicate those across the way, and once again save uh, um, some mega uh, geometry and focus more on the interior here. But uh, here we got a blank. We got some dancing room here. Um, I'm going to do this area with the escalators and what have you as a separate element. As part of the as part of the uh, the iteration process. In other words, I want this main area in here to be fully constructed as to uh, being a facade that keeps the outside light out. And uh, we're going to now flip over to uh, building stuff in 3ds Max and progress from there. So we'll bring that up. Ta-da! Here's our working platform with all our goodies into it, but. Uh, a lot of this we do not need uh, as to uh, putting the, the, the right stuff in the right place of building the facade in that section the metro station so uh, let's kind of uh, where is it I got to kind of reorientate myself sometimes you can get disorientated based on what you see uh, I've gone ahead and moved collision into its own little section here so we can just kind of pop that out of the way and that's 40 um, okay, we're in perspective view. We need what's on the inside. There it is, and that's uh, 42. 
So we're going to select all of our all of our blocks over here, and we're going to turn off everything. Oop. Uh, okay, can't select it by Control A. So we'll select everything, all our our layers. Turn everything off. Boom. So now we got a blank palette to work from, and we're going to act activate 42. Come on, deselect, deselect. There we go. Oh boy. Okay, so. Um, we need to be working in, in block 42, so we'll highlight it. See that blue there? That means that we're working on that layer. So we'll turn that on, and then boom, there's our there's our metro station with all the little goodies, and here's the escalators and uh, that section. Uh, looks a little bit ugly. We have some detailing work that's uh, involved going on here. But uh, I think uh, we'll do a little bit uh, of modeling here to kind of demonstrate what we're what we're shooting for and then of course when i start working on the other areas i'm just going to uh go ahead as to what's necessary to uh, define the volume of space and then worry about uh subdividing up the uh, surface areas for the material work that has to be done and we'll do a, a separate uh, episode on uh, layering in the materials now i have these sections here the uh the support beams which are uh, which are obviously part of the map, but uh, but can just as easily, you know, I'll do those I'll do those later off screen, and then tell you what I did. I don't want to waste too much time doing maintenance maintenance work, uh, just to to just because I kind of overlooked something. So uh, we'll we'll put that in as part, as part of scene management 101. Uh, kind of idea. So we're going what we need to start off with though is a simple box I uh, will turn on auto grid so we can create a box that's going to occupy this space Now I want to kind of I'm already lined up with the floor. So what I want to do is move this Box into the corner here. So it snaps into the corner So we're aligned with at least one wall and and the floor Now I'm going to convert this over to an edible polygon to create a, a, a facade and then uh, s select all the faces. Oh, come on! Why? Oh, we got sl lock selection turned on. And we're going to flip our faces, and we're going to go to our object properties and select back face call, which turns off the back face. The uh, AKA dual materials, you might or two sided materials, you might want to call it. Okay, we'll select, uh, and we're going to uh, to uh, bring this out to volume. Okay, we got snaps turned off, and we're going to skid that across the floor, so it lines up with the far wall, and we just want that so our so we have uh, a bit of Z fighting going on. So if you see the flickering, you know you're perfectly aligned. Now we don't necessarily have to be that anal about it. Uh, <laughs> as being you know if, if we're 99.9% .9 accurate then we're, we're, we're gold but if we want to be we got tools to do that so assuming of course that uh, that our, our uh, reference material is square to begin with we can just snap to the corners now now I don't want to turn these uh, this into a, a video uh, or a um, modeling uh, tutorial uh, all this stuff you can do quite easily in whatever application that you're using if it's Maya or Blender or what have you You just got to kind of extrapolate from what I am doing here for your own purposes in your own application Okay, so there we have a volume of space being occupied by a, a Block now I'm going to apply what I like to a, a, a modeling material which is just an animated material that you can skid up and down to uh, actually see what's behind a wall if you have too much surface in the way to actually get a sense of what's going on now let's look at this environment here um, I'm going to uh, I would just more or less knock out the doors where the door should be and, and do a little bit of detailing work or what have you and then I uh, would consider that to be adequate for the purpose of creating a facade and then uh, a follow up with what's necessary to uh, prevent the light from come outside coming in. But let's go ahead and um, 
and divide this map this up as if we were going to, uh, the next step immediately immediately after this would be um, uh, texturing uh, UV mapping and all that good stuff so I'll go ahead and create a connector to divide out these um, these different uh, uh, tiles now I could use uh, artistic prerogative and simply uh, map this to a material type that I know I already have I have a really nice tile texture that uh, is part of another uh, a sample package uh, the uh, reflection sample and uh, it's uh, broken and some of it's dirty and filthy and I used it already in a pre previous iteration of this particular map that didn't work out the way I wanted to but I am going to attempt to uh, maintain continuity uh, of the of the uh, the rebuild with the uh, the original. Okay, so that gives us the uh, a, a, a roof, floor, the uh, walls, and of course we divided up the tiles here a little bit. Now we need to knock out our doors, and we're going to do that by creating some more loops. Okay, I want the uh, the side doors first. No, I want the crown. That's what I want first. So we can continue. So everything kind of gets uh, divided in equal lengths. Okay, can tell already that uh, we have somewhat of a decision to make. Okay, I'm aligned with the two back doors perfectly and but the side doors are, are slightly out of alignment as far as the header goes so I want all the doors to be this kind of the same height for now I can change this later or do I want yeah you know somebody's going to come in here with a measuring stick and they're going to measure that and they say well it's not the same size as the original so it's not going to cost us much effort to just make everything here as uh, line up with the original okay we got this over here I think I've mentioned that this back section whoops I think I mentioned already that this back se section here with the escalators is going to be uh, is going to be an iteration of this environment it's a not it's a non-playing uh, element of our environment so uh, we'll do that at a later date for the sake of just keeping uh, keeping um, let's say our our uh, our uh, video here down to uh, a reasonable length now these are not video tutorials <laughs> this is actually going to be working a working element in the game this is re whoops yeah you know I got a, a division here I need to deal with. Yeah, I, I, I'm ahead of myself. I need to do this first before I do this second. Okay, so let's get rid of that and let's do our, our, our sides here. And yes, believe it or not, there will be members of the community that will go in here with a measuring tape and measure things out. Say, that's not the same as it is. You know, one person actually complained about the shadowing in, uh, in uh, actually in Turnpike. You know, um, Turnpike did get an uh, update in uh, 4.3 because of an issue of some sort, a playing uh, playing field issue. I, I don't know, I can't remember what it was, but uh, Blade Killer was nice enough to fix it and recompile the map and. Uh, one of, the, one of the shadows was out of position where it is in the, in the, where it was in the original was not where it was in the uh, the uh, the fixed version and somebody actually complained about it you know mm. not that I'm saying that's a bad thing I mean you know you got to keep people honest I guess So we're going to try to maintain continuity. You know, it also that it also makes a lot of the decisions a lot easier when you're trying to accomplish a one-to-one -one conversion. 
and it requires a lot less thinking because we just have to you know this is kind of like uh, coloring book stuff you got to kind of paint with inside the lines and uh, we don't need to be too too highly accurate but uh, you know, if we are but we could be off to some degree okay we gotta fix that in just a second okay we need to loop oh no not loop we need ring ring and connect and I think I mentioned more and more one occasion. I don't want to turn this into a modeling with 3ds Max tutorial. And uh, st stay rather generic. Now I'm going to misalign the loop, uh, the, ra the the loop here, which is something you know you want to try to avoid. You want really ver nice vertical and horizontal edge loops if possible. It saves your sanity in a lot of ways. But at the same time, we can correct a lot of that when we get to the actual UV mapping and uh, uh, applying some materials, which I'll, uh, as I uh, hopefully I've mentioned, I'm going to leave that for another episode because it tends to this type of construction tends to slow things down because I do have to focus on two things at the same time <laughs> which is uh, you know not that easy okay ring so oops for example I knew I was going to be off on that uh, I'm going to use uh, okay just to kind of show off a tool here I'm going to use grid uh, the alignment tool here sometimes the uh, the orientation it becomes different it doesn't match up with this so Z in 3ds max is up and uh, as vertical and uh, sometimes it's left and right so it doesn't always divide in the right direction yeah you see uh, okay this is the problem we're working in perspective mode we get kind of off on our on our headpiece here so we need to sort of go to our to a side here switch to user view for our side are we on now we're on our right side and this is where our our animated materials come in handy as we can kind of bring that down a bit we'll do a loop which loops all the way around looping means that we start at one end and we land up on the other so now our three doors should be two height and we need to correct the height on this door and we can't correct on that door just yet well we could okay where were we at over on the other side there okay so we need to uh, finish off this one door here our easement or our uh, what should we call it inset our in inlay and uh, we'll do a um, connect okay, that door is by itself so you can hear it's raining that doesn't help much either because uh, it kind of zones me out okay ring connect okay, speed it up come on keep things exciting okay getting close to finishing off our facade here believe it or not we're a lot closer to the finishing it than we are okay uh, orthographic view is not desirable to working in uh, in a non-orthographic view so we'll move that up and just to be a little bit anal we'll move this down okay so <clears throat> okay we got a, a strip of tiling here that uh, I, I've missed so I'm going to correct that right now by ringing around a rosy and we'll do connect nope that didn't work whoop connect yeah that worked okay now we'll nudge that over okay so uh we have uh, a separation of tiling okay 
it's kind of off on this side so we're going to align that but I am going to switch that up by using the scaling tool and we're just going to scale that into uh, into planar okay I probably have to do the other side now too as well do a ring and a connect yes I know it's like watching grass grow I think I mentioned already that this this is going to be used this is a working asset so uh, we have to be at least a somewhat careful about uh, not be too overly sloppy okay I think we're done with that section so let's go ahead and actually make a collision mesh for this and it's actually super easy it's somewhat of the same process but we can be uber sloppy uh, uh, about creating and uh, based on uh, using the same kind of construction method as uh, as demonstrated for doing the exterior but we want to snap kind of snap the uh, the collision meshes together on the outside so they match up move uh, select snap so we can snap that into the corner so we can be hard up against the, the walls and uh, we're going to convert this over into a poly object and uh, select the side and uh, skid along the floor basically the same process the reason why I did this section here uh, first of all I'm going to do the same thing to the uh, the other part of the interior uh, the other part that's over there um, I'm going to do that uh, off screen because it's a lot it's a lot more um, so a lot more complicated environment uh, to uh, spend the time to actually do everything in real time um, you know it'll take me about an hour to do that I guess okay as explained how collision works the collision is to the inside face so we've got to select everything and flip our faces so that their faces are on the inside and we got to turn on uh, call we got to turn on back face call so now we can see on the inside and I'm going to change our material to blue. Uh, I I, res I reserve blue for for doing collision meshes. Now we have uh, two exits to this building here, from the outside to the inside. So we're going to select all the edges and uh, connect up. And uh, just to save everybody's sanity, I am going to do the detailing work off screen to kind of match, match up the mesh but I want to kind of show uh, how uh, our our environment here is going to interlock with the outside as part of the iteration process okay what I do know is the far side door matches up with the opposite side door so there we go Okay, and uh, it's uh, two doors done. No, one and a half doors done. Ring. Connect. Now, if you're actually interested in this kind of stuff, um, Zach Parrish did a, a series of uh, 3D Buzz called Modeling on the Fly, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, he uh, tended to, uh, he would take a, a project uh, from beginning to end much um, somewhat along the way uh, aligns of what I'm doing here called uh, modeling on the fly so uh, what my uh, my topic is here of course is somewhat of um, a, a homage to that as to showing how things progress now I'm going to as he has uh, if I screw up um, I'm going to have to fix it on screen as much as possible unless of course uh, <laughs> uh, ultimately if it comes down to what I usually do and that is to destroy my work and start over okay so now I need a connector I want uh, I need an easement here to kind of connect the uh, inside to the outside so that simply will pull that out uh, I'm using the boundary tool this is not a tutorial on how to model this is a tutorial on how to prep and build use a, a a map that can be used in Unreal 4 
that we can run, run around. Okay, this is uh, 42 collision. Oh, collision 42. And 42. Ah, eh, screw you. Okay, uh, it's not critical because I'm going to be attaching this to my other collision and updating that. Okay, so um, let's take a look and see if our collision mesh is actually a collision mesh and not just a mishmash. Okay, isolate it. Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, okay, so that goes into this section down here that I named collision. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Okay, so there's there's our outer collision mesh, and looks like by the looks of things we're actually interlocked with it. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, I'm going to have a bit of a sip here, guys. Sorry, I mean, it's not... Uh... Okay, so we're going to do something gutsy here, which I, I'm assuming is going to work because we're just simply applying a simplified collision to everything, which means everything gets a, a geometry. So I don't know if this is going to be an efficient way of doing things. Obviously, we don't have the right material that I made for collision on there okay so we'll select that now now it should attach boom booyah and we'll isolate that for now and uh, yeah that's pretty good it's close um let's uh let's twitch uh do a little bit of twitch fix here just so they're a little bit closer I'll probably off screen <laughs> get a little bit more refined and refine the uh, geometry as part of the cleanup. As I mentioned, we're going to be getting rid of a lot of these edge loops here because they're not uh, like like they're not required for the job that they need to do. Like this, this here is waste. So just to get a kind of idea of what we're going to be doing there, so we don't. I'll be selecting the uh, loops, do a control, remove, boom, and it becomes a solid uh, one panel surface, a lot more efficient. But of course, we're going to be creating holes in it still, so we're kind of ahead of the game. So this is outer collision with some inner collision. <laughs> so, we're go But I'm not going to bother changing the name. Uh, okay, I know this probably drives people crazy down the road uh, when you when you go off. Okay, so there's outer collision. We're going to save that. We're going to go yes, and then we're going to go okay. And uh, we're going to go over to uh, Unreal 4. As I mentioned we before already, we're going to be doing things a, a little bit out of order. Okay, we actually updated the collision in all probability. So if we hit play at this right here, boom. See, we have collision for the walls. We can run around the wall. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, um, you want your collision to be vertical so that the players don't hook up onto it. So these uh, pillars here do need some form of collision, but uh, we're going to create some, hopefully some kind of easement so that uh, they don't hook the player up. At worst case, we'll let them clip the pillars. But indeed, we have established collision. Now we need to update our interior, which is, as you see, is block 42. So we need to go over and finish that off to make it re usable, make it ready, and isolation. Okay, we do no longer need that. Our collision is done. And uh, we kind of need to uh, finish this off. So we're going to isolate that. Actually, I need that to kind of use that to use it as a reference. We have a door here, here, over the other side that needs to be knocked out. 
Oh, come on. What are we? Locked off? Sometimes that's so annoying. Ignore back face. A little bit annoying. Okay, so we're going to select those, 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 and... Um, okay, I... Okay, just to kind of go off script here, we'll do a mathematical extrude. That should extrude... I'm hoping in the right direction. Please, please. Did you extrude? Yes, you did. Okay, so we did a mathematical... Actually, hmm... We're going to let the next process deal with that for us. So we're going to select that, that, this, this, and this. And this, 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 that, that, that. That's where the doors are going to be. Um, I'm going to deal with this stuff here uh, in a later episode. That uh, These are actually uh, weren't extracted out as map objects, which they should have been. Um, they're actually part of the uh, uh, the block, but we're going to be at this stage replacing this block anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Now, there's a modifier in our in our modifier panel here, and uh, the reason, uh, obviously, why I've uh, I've uh, done uh, done my modeling this way is going to become apparent rather quickly. As boom, it creates a rather ugly looking. Uh, uh, geometry uh, box around our uh, inner uh, core which is fine and dandy and what we need it to do uh, but we need to thin that down quite a bit let's uh, let's make our 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 inner mount inner uh, amount is now actually our outer amount so let's try 10 units see how that does for us yeah okay uh, that actually looks good basically we want this to do what we want our our metro station here to to work is it drops in as as a block kind of like if we popped it in with a transporter or something like that uh, into the to into the um, facade of the outer pieces and combining those two together and interlocking them means that the, the outside light can't get in and the inside light can't get out and uh, we get a really nice lighting solution on the interior as uh, part of the construction. So uh, getting the right amount of this of, uh, extrusion. Okay. okay, 15. Okay, there's going to be an inset in here for the power door so we're not too worried about that I think we're done there okay so we're going to convert this over to poly so we can planar the surface we're non-planar right now non-planar means that our surfaces is not parallel to one another so you seem more associated to um, here's here's the uh, here's the example of a true planar non-planar surface is that if we create a plane object and we have one by one subdivision and we grab a corner convert that to an object and we select that corner and we move it okay this this surface is made up of uh, of two triangles connect with an invisible line between them so we can see that by turning on our turn mode which i always find hard to find because i don't use it as much as i used to okay uh, turn. Where's turn? I probably skipped over to go. Oh, there you are. Hello. So that there's our hidden edge. So if we take a corner and we move it, then our polygon will deform based on the edge. So if we turn that back on again, it cuts across. Now this is good if we were doing low poly modeling because you you model low polys based on on trist, not polygons. But polygon is an invention invention. So where if we make a, a selection of a different type of tool, it selects based on the edge. So for example, if I select that edge over there and I do a ring, it rings across to the other side, which then I can do a connect. But our surface is non-planar. It needs to be planar. So you select that, select that, and you planar it. And there's where our surface is now planar to this surface as being a polygon. Um, so that's the root of what planar is. Okay, so we go back and uh, get back to where we were. And we're going to select our surfaces here and planar that in a direction that is 
Yeah, it didn't work. Okay, sometimes sometimes x is x and sometimes x is not x. <laughs> sometimes y is y and sometimes y is not y. So if we use the shell modifier, a lot of times you have to kind of uh, put the outer the uh, the extrusion back into planar from top to bottom. Now I could cheat and just use um, select by angle, but uh, doesn't always work. This gives me control over my selection. Uh, I'll just do it. See, it says by angle. Let's see if it works for us today. Yeah, okay, we're good. Okay. This should be Y. X, Y, C. Huh. Yeah, C doesn't always work. I've got a selection at the bottom down there, so. Let's. Yeah, see? Uh, let's try changing the angle down to 10. Yeah, see, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm doing something wrong or if it's a bug. But let's fix it the good old-fashioned way. We're going to do this by taking our time. Okay. Doing the exterior facade mm, will be a lot faster. And maybe I'll select something way off on the other side, which will take me like 10 minutes to do. Or maybe I'll just go ahead and do the um, facade that interconnects with the metro station. What was that? Was that Y? Nope. X. Yep. Okay, let's take our top view. I could actually correct it in the top view. Would have been a little bit faster. That's why we put uh, a material, a, a modeling material in there, so so we can see how this stuff is forming. Okay, what about the side view? Are we still square? All right, nice and square. Okay, so what do we do next? Uh, okay, uh, we need to. Well, we don't have to, but we need to clean. You see how it sort of created this, uh, these little ramps. So we're just going to add in some extra geometry to fix that up. And uh, I'm going to select that. And you know, the bottom edge is, I mean, that, it, uh, wow. Yeah, we're a little bit screwed up on the bottom there. I didn't fix the bottom. There is a bottom. There's not a floor, but there is a bottom. Okay, let's fix that. I think I'm in the front view. Okay, there we go. Okay. There's always one last thing. Oh, by the way, one last thing. Actually, I want to do it by face. It's They're too close. Okay, will, will by angle work for us today? Yes, it worked for us that time. I don't know why. It likes the top and bottoms, but never the side to side. Okay, so uh, is it Z this time? Yes. Let's... Yes. Okay, we're all squared up now. Okay, back to where we were. I, I promise I'll try to keep these things down to an hour, but there's no guarantee, so I can't really say I can promise, can I? Okay, so we'll select that. We'll select that. We'll do a ring. Do we need more? Yes, we need more. We need we need this edge involved, and we need this edge involved. We'll do a ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, connect, and a connect. Okay, we're actually getting pretty close. Uh, move. I think we're there. Ah, you SOB. Yeah, once again, I apologize, but this is how, this is how modeling, this is the kind of thing that modeling is time consuming. We need to break 
the inner loop which we had uh, created okay back 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 to work here okay ring over here ring you ring okay ah I forgot I didn't uh, I didn't no what am I doing oh right I need to get rid of this down here down here and uh, oh boy you know something I'm going to leave this as a cleanup because uh, I know what I need to do, but I'm trying to, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a shortcut, a shortcut, and there's no shortcutting it, there's a, it, there's about a five minute fix, and I'm already kind of, a, if I had done it the right way, I would have been done, but anyways, there's our, there's our inner facade for our metro station, which is block 42, so we're going to call this block 42, and we should be in our 42 layer, and we need some extra work done so first of all we're going to clean up the uh do a um, a quick cleanup of our our, our of our uv mapping temporary and we're going to convert this over to a polygon we're going to do it and we need a uv mapping channel so this is how you create a UV, uv mapping channel in 3ds max you select a new mapping channel so uv mapping channel is usually on the second one is zero one in Unreal and in 3ds Max is going to be one two. So our mapping channel in this case is going to be two. We hit the abandon key and we open up our editor and we select all our faces. And I'm just going to auto map it, and it does a pretty good job. Now the auto mapping will take all the surfaces and equally divide the map out so everything in it, uh, is uh, equal in scale. So that's the. Uh, um, a more benefit to us than 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 anything else uh, we'll be doing uh, stuff like uh, conforming this to uh, one meter equals one, one meter and uh, and call that a day so now we have uh, 42 done we're going to export this out as selected and I'm going to create another folder under FBX this is all our working our working maps we need uh, our detail maps our, our key t detail objects so that we'll call this a detail so we can keep it separate actually we don't this is such a simple a simple project we can just do this within the FBX folder actually it's going to get complicated so we need to create this as a as a folder so we have detail but we need to create this as a now that I think about it, this is block 42 because we have some parts that are involved with in in this block that might be uh, uh, that need to be part of it, like the the the, um, the um, ticket booth and what have you. So we'll just creep, we'll just throw that into its folder. We can always change it later, right? So that's block 42, and off it goes. And we're going to go to Unreal 4, and and uh, we're going to create our full a new folder. We're going to call this Mesh. And we need a folder called new folder, a working folder called block 42, so it matches up with our with our uh, our block in bat fingers block 42, which matches up with our folder over in uh, in uh, that we exported. Bring that over, block 42. There's our block 42. We go to block 42 over here, and of course. Our folder loses focus. Uh, I'm sorry for a little bit over the map here. Um, I'll get better at it. Import, but I'm actually mapping the working asset. So I'm going to drag that in. There it is, and as you can see, there's block 42, and we have this mess of materials that are attached. No, I'm actually selecting the original one, aren't I? I didn't, uh, I tried to move that in. Block 42, come on, why are you, why are you not playing nice? <sighs> okay, 
I wanted to do a surprise reveal. Not working. We'll just get rid of it. Come on. Why are you not dropping in? Uh, actually, it did drop in. I probably have 20 copies there by now. Let's see. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. So, snap that into place. Okay. And we hit the play button. And we're crashing in and they're in our inside. You can see we got uh, a bit of a split in the sidewalk, which is okay because we're going to be interlocking the out outside to the inside. And uh, we're good to go as far as this uh, area is concerned. Uh, there's an area where we're going to be doing a specialized uh, uh, insertment. Uh, oops, we forgot the divider in the middle. So make it cut. Let's just say I did that on purpose. So we can. Uh, continue on here since we are using uh, uh, um, you can see why we need a animated uh, build material and we'll do an uh, end isolation and we're going to go ahead and put that little block in right now and attach it to and make it a permanent fixture of our of our um, area here and honest guys honest 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 I am a lot faster than this when I don't have to chew you know I don't have to talk at the same time I'm actually, yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's annoying. Convert to, uh, oh, convert to animal folly. Move, use the snap tool. Okay. I should have put a warning on the top front of this saying that, uh, warning, you're about to watch grass grow. Okay. Anyways, you guys tell me, is this, am I at least being informative? Because I'm, I'm really tempted to do this over again. But I'm also thinking this, this is as good as it gets for now. I will get better. I am tempted to, I, I, you know, I kind of want to, to keep things slow. So people can follow along and not kind of lose track of uh, of uh, what's going on. Because uh, that happens to me too, guys. Uh, you know, I'm watching something and uh, the guy would just uh, go so fast that I would have to re actually rewind rewind a couple of times. Come in to think of it, you can always rewind if you want, or you can actually fast forward if you want. Okay, we've got two objects here. Now we could deal with this with a, in a couple of ways. We could actually uh, just export this as a, as a complete single unit, all tied in as one component, or we can export it and then and then import it as a unified mesh in Unreal 4. But you know, uh, we're just going to go ahead and attach that for now. So we now have uh, everything connected to this uh, to this facade as a single unit. And we're going to select this and export it as by selection and uh, block 42. This actually gives me an opportunity to show you how the iteration process is going to work. So now if we pop over to, to Unreal 4 and I select, uh, where's my interior? Where did it go? You see. Oh, come on. Mm. Things are getting weird. I don't know why. Okay, so anyways, we're back to somewhat square one. Then we do a re-import, and there's our center uh, divider. It just pops into place. So each time we do an iteration, then it pops in for us. But obviously, we do not have collision assigned to it. Now, uh, what should we do about that, guys? We could do a blocking volume because it is a, a part of the blocking volume. Yeah, or we can just add that in to our collision mesh as once again sh showing some flexibility here. So, so we're not good, we're not bad, we're just slow. <laughs> Okay, so there's there's our piece that we need to put our collision on to it. So we're going to create another box around it. Okay. 
move will turn on snaps. This is a snap box up here, so you'll see that turning on from time to time. If you see that means I'm using a snap. Convert this over to a box. Move. Once again, I apologize for being slow and boring. And I didn't bring beer and nachos. But I also wanted to kind of demonstrate at least some form of construction uh, video here as to how to how to build a facade, how to build a collision, and how to eliminate geometry that we don't need, how to apply a collision type uh, material that we're going to use as a collision based material, and how to, we can just simply uh, and quite easily do updates as ongoing. So if we totally messed this up, we can always go back and remove that. And do it a different way if it didn't doesn't work out so we can do a, do a update export selected and that is our collision mesh which is in our main folder our collision a name is a name is a name it doesn't necessarily mean what it's it doesn't necessarily mean that it's ours 100 percent outer collision okay there we are here and uh we go to uh where did I put it? I'm pretty sure there it is. That, this is why we put things into into segmented folders. Do a quick re-import, and we now should be able to hit play and crash into the wall. Now I made that all look harder than it really is, but, it's, uh, <laughs> but I hope at the same time I made it look easier than it actually is. Okay, so here's where where our I got a little bit of cleanup to do. I don't want you guys sitting around watching me do it. And then I'll uh, do the um, the uh, outer facade that ties into this inner piece here, uh, so we can show a, a, a form of connectivity in part two. And uh, once again, uh, just a heads up warning: it is going to be grass growing time again. But uh, uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's going to be a little bit critical that we're going to kind of balance things out so we get a nice division between the, uh, uh, the, the inner and the outer. Now let's try one last thing that hopefully won't take forever. Give me an opportunity to have uh, a little bit of a sip. Um, also, um, the limited amount of geometry in here that's going on here, the uh, production rendering uh, or production uh, light building is ra actually really fast. But uh, let's see what happens if we, uh, if we set up uh, a quickie uh, render for our uh, 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 our uh, you know no it's good uh, we I've, I've kept your attention for too long already so uh, I'll update the lighting and in the next episode we'll just see the results okay see you guys <laughs>